The Montreal Mafia has a long and turbulent history that spans several decades and involves different factions, families, and alliances. In this section, we will explore the origins and evolution of the Montreal Mafia, focusing on the Sicilian and Calabrian groups, the Rizzuto crime family, and their rivals. The Sicilian and Calabrian factions the Montreal Mafia emerged in the early 20th century as an offshoot of the American Mafia, which itself was influenced by the Sicilian Mafia. The first known boss of the Montreal Mafia was Vic Catroni, a Calabrian immigrant who arrived in Canada in 1924. Catroni established his power base in Montreal's East End, where he controlled gambling, prostitution, and drug trafficking. He also forged ties with the Bonanno crime family in New York, which recognized him as the official representative of the Canadian underworld. Catroni's reign was challenged by rival groups, such as the Caruana Contra clan, a Sicilian family that operated in Venezuela and trafficked cocaine to Canada and the U.S. Another threat came from Paolo Violi, a Calabrian who had been sent by the Bonanno family to assist Catroni, but who soon became ambitious and sought to take over. Violi also had connections with the Buffalo crime family and the French-Canadian West End gang. In the 1970s, a power struggle erupted between the Calabrian and Sicilian factions of the Montreal Mafia. The Sicilians were led by Niccolo Rizzuto, a native of Catolica Eracliaho had married into the Mano clan, a powerful Sicilian Mafia family. Rizzuto had immigrated to Montreal in 1954 and became an associate of Catroni's Sicilian wing. He was dissatisfied with Catroni's leadership and Violi's interference, and he wanted more autonomy and influence for his group. Rizzuto formed an alliance with the Contra Caruana clan and other Sicilian families, and launched a violent campaign to eliminate Violi and his supporters. Between 1973 and 1978, several Calabrian mobsters were killed or wounded in a series of bombings, shootings, and stabbings. The most notable victim was Violi himself, who was shot dead in his own cafe in 1978. With Violi gone, Rizzuto became the undisputed boss of the Montreal Mafia and secured recognition from the Bonanno family. The recent wave of violence and killings that have targeted members and associates of the Montreal Mafia, such as Claudia Iacono, Sal Scapa, and Andrew Scapa Montreal is a city known for its culture, cuisine, and charm. But behind the scenes, a bloody war has been raging for years among rival factions of the underworld. The Montreal Mafia, once dominated by the Sicilian Rizzuto family, has been torn apart by internal strife, betrayals, and assassinations. In this section, we will look at some of the most recent victims of this brutal conflict, and how their deaths have shaken the criminal landscape of the city. Claudia Iacono was the wife of Andrea, Andrew, Scapa reputedly one of the most influential leaders of the Montreal Mafia. She was also the sister-in-law of Salvatore, Sal, Scapa, who was allegedly behind a series of murders targeting Sicilian mobsters. Claudia Iacono was not directly involved in the criminal activities of her husband or brother-in-law, but she paid a high price for their actions. On January 18, 2023, she was shot dead in front of her home in Pierrefins Roxborough by a masked gunman who fled the scene on a motorcycle. She was 46 years old and left behind two children. Her murder was seen as a retaliation for the killings orchestrated by her brother-in-law Sal Scapa. Sal Scapa was a leader of a Calabrian clan that wanted to eliminate the Sicilian rivals and take over the Montreal Mafia. He was accused of ordering the deaths of Lorenzo Giordano and Rocco Salicito two high-ranking members of the Rizzuto family, in 2016. He was also suspected of being involved in several other homicides and attempted murders. Sal Scapa was a cunning and ruthless operator who had many enemies and few allies. He lived under constant threat and often changed his appearance and location to avoid detection. On May 4, 2019, his luck ran out when he was gunned down at a hotel in Laval by a hitman who had lured him outside with a phone call. He was 49 years old and left behind four children. His murder was seen as a revenge for the deaths he had ordered or participated in. Andrew Scapa was Sal's older brother and a powerful figure in the Montreal Mafia. 
He had close ties with the Rizzuto family and other criminal groups, such as the Hells Angels and street gangs. He was considered a mediator and a peacemaker who tried to avoid unnecessary violence and maintain stability in the underworld. He was also a savvy businessman who invested in legitimate ventures, such as real estate and construction. Andrew Scapa had been arrested several times on various charges, but he always managed to avoid conviction or get acquitted. He had survived several attempts on his life, but he could not escape his fate. On October 21, 2019, he was shot dead in a parking lot in Pierrefins Roxboro by an unknown assailant who ambushed him as he drove his car. He was 55 years old and left behind three children. His murder was seen as a sign of the ongoing turmoil and uncertainty in the Montreal Mafia. These are just some of the examples of the violence and killings that have plagued the Montreal Mafia in recent years. The war has claimed dozens of lives and wounded many more. It has also exposed the fragility and vulnerability of the criminal organization that once ruled the city with an iron fist. The Montreal Mafia is now divided into factions that are constantly at odds with each other and with external enemies. The power vacuum created by the deaths of key players has led to capes and instability in the underworld. The future of the Montreal Mafia is uncertain and unpredictable. Who will rise to fill the void? Who will fall next? And what will be the consequences for the city and its citizens? The role and response of the police and law enforcement agencies in investigating and preventing the gang violence, as well as the challenges and risks they face. The Montreal mob war has been raging for more than a decade, claiming dozens of lives and exposing the power struggles within the Sicilian Mafia and against rival factions like the Calabrian Drangheta. The police and law enforcement agencies have been trying to keep up with the escalating violence and bring the perpetrators to justice, but they face many challenges and risks in their work. One of the main challenges is the lack of cooperation from the victims and witnesses, who are often reluctant to talk to the police for fear of retaliation or loyalty to their criminal associates. This makes it hard for the police to gather evidence and identify suspects especially when the killings are carried out by professional hitmen who leave no traces behind. For example, when Rocco Salicito, a high-ranking member of the Rizzuto crime family, was shot dead in his car in 2016, the police had no leads or suspects. 